Welcome everybody, I'm Willy Fogg. Ain't from California, I'm from Concordia, Modena, Italy. Rhyme me naturally, the M, the A, the T, the T, the O, the P. I'll never get a Grammy, so fuck the G. Foggy, because I'm from a very foggy place, you know, up there in northern Italy. And uh, yes, I will never get a Grammy, but today I'm here. That, by the way, in English is called an attention getter. So I see that some of you right now are attentive. They're actually prepared to hear what is it that is going to happen next. So if I can have all your attention, we'll get started. And I'll tell you how last year, for the first time in history, we organized a rap battle. That's exactly what I said. We organized a rap battle, the first ever rap battle at the European Parliament in Brussels. The reason why we organized the rap battle is because we wanted to use hip-hop as a language to try to engage the young voters and make sure okay, that voters would vote at the European elections, especially the people that are between 18 and 49 years old. Now, if you think of the history of hip-hop, okay, hip-hop is transparent, it's direct, and it's immediate. It's TDI. And you know what? Sometimes an idea is rolled out overnight, Sometimes it takes a long time for an idea to finally to be implemented. And I originally had this idea back in 1999 when I was working in the U.S. for a U.S. senator during a campaign that it also happened to be a presidential campaign. And this particular person, because we, all, we always want to give credit to the people that basically help us, you know, generate these ideas. This person would talk all the time about doing this straight talking and be very straightforward with the voters and also taking an approach that is citizen-centric, a sort of Revoluzione Copernicana, Copernican revolution where you put the citizen at the center of the political system and not the other way around. So I guess that I'm here at the right time because I know that you have elections coming up tomorrow. So hopefully the talk today will inspire you a little bit, you know, to do something a bit Copernican tomorrow. Um, in 2009, at the European elections, only about 29% of the youth, considering the brackets between 18 years old and 39 years old, actually voted. So as I cooperate, Within a, with a, a non-profit association called the EU40, European Union 40. This is the association of all of the members of the European Parliament that are 40 years old or younger. So in Italy it would be, you know, uh, Bar Lara Comi, who was won, by the way, of the rappers in the rap battle, uh, Barbara Matera, Alessia Mosca, Simona Bonafè, and so on and so forth, Sonia Alfano, not the other Alfano, Sonia Alfano. And <laughs> yeah, just you know, cracking a little joke. And, um, and basically what we did, together with the EU40, we created a platform a transversal platform, because this is the transversal section, and our goal right here was to put together hip-hop as a language and politics. So we created a platform called the EU Unplugged. Why Unplugged? Because it's a little bit like when you go to a concert and you want to hear something in a way that it's transparent, direct, and immediate, without a synthesizer, without many special effects, you know, just in a way that it's direct, like a little guy, you know, playing the guitar right next to the people, and you're right there in the little circle, and you're really getting the real story right there. So with the EU Unplugged, we embarked on a journey. These are, by the way, the other crazy people that worked with me on this. Um, and, no, the, 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 three, th the tres amigos right there of the EU Unplugged. Well, we, we set on a journey, and our goal was, because today we're here to talk about conversation, was to turn the political discourse, because when you hear discourse, it sounds, it sounds very old-fashioned. Like, I'm talking to you, I'm the politician, I'm talking to you, you're the voter or the potential elector, and there is no feedback. But as we live in the conversation age, today, you know, 2.0, 3.0, and so on and so forth, we really wanted to make sure that, first of all, we would make this more engaging, and yet the idea, hence we decided to also use hip-hop at the end of the day, because hip-hop is a language as well, and it's very helpful actually to engage people, because there's the, the, not only the music, but also the body language, that is more than 50% of our communication, and then we set on this journey to innovate the political discourse one bit at a time. So we had the first debate at the Hard Rock Cafe in Brussels, because we wanted to put together the politicians with the common people, quote-unquote, with the citizens, and we turned the political debate into a musical. 
And we got very lucky because actually Facebook funded this, because a lot of people think of Facebook as just you know, something that lives out there on the internet, but it's actually a real company with real people. So they like the idea, and although we can say that they don't need friends, because they have a lot of friends, nevertheless, they decided, to, you know, they decided to fund us, and so we had the first. And then we decided to take it exponential, to go one level up. And, in, in, and so we, we did a little bit of introspection, and we thought about how when hip hop went from Jamaica, where it was invented, to the US back in the late 1970s, if you think about the history of hip hop, the history of hip hop is about, de is about getting rid of emargination. It's about empowering people that otherwise would have not have a voice. And this is exactly what hip hop did for the people that used to be in the ghettos, like in Harlem or New York City or in other places. And that's also why hip hop as a universal language has gone really right now worldwide and we have hip hop in many different languages. Although our battle last year was in English because we used English as a lingua franca. And that's also why I'm using English for the presentation today because basically I'm here on behalf of the EU40 as well and of the European Parliament. So, let me just show you a little bit how the, 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 the rules actually work. The idea was to indeed to use hip hop to engage the young people. And while the video goes, thanks Valeria for playing that, what we did, we worked with the four largest political groups in the parliament. And for each group, it's a little bit the format that you may have seen here on television. You know, has anybody here seen in the audience MTV Spit? The one with Marrakesh? Have you? Yeah, I see some people nodding right there. Good. So we work with MTV and Facebook together. So it was very good to also have MTV come on board. And MTV said, OK, you can use the format and you can turn this into your own rap battle. So basically, we had four teams, the team from the European, from the EPP, the team from the Socialists and the Democrats, the team from the Greens, and also the team from the Liberal and the Democrats. And for each team, we had two politicians working with a hip hop artist. And what, and what would happen is that they would be, we would randomly select a topic and a topic that would be very important, what they call hot issues for the voters. So this may be, this may be youth unemployment, or it could be immigration, the future of the euro, the future of the eurozone. And then there would be a briefing, so the teams would get together, and after five minutes, don't worry, I'll show you the images because I promise that I will bring this to life and I will bring it to you, and I cannot rap for all the political parties, so I'll just show you the little video. And so the idea is that basically they would go head to head on the different, on the different topics. So um, it was extremely successful. It went beyond any expectation whatsoever. It was actually the largest ever event held in the European Parliament, to the point that without even knowing that, uh, we organized it the same evening of the first debate between Schulz and Juncker to become the next president of the European Commission. And I'm very happy to report that actually Schulz came to see a rap battle instead of the other way around, even though he was only there for five minutes. And it's funny because people started tweeting, like, look at this, you know, this is, you know, I kid you not, this is the largest, just look at the line outside of the European Parliament there in order to, to get in for the, for the hip hop battle. And it's funny because some people started tweeting, like, you know, if instead of having Schulz or Juncker, we could have, you know, Snoop Dogg or we could have some Beyonce as president of the European Commission, things would be a lot better by now in Europe. So, and it's interesting to see that you know, people at the beginning, yes, they were skeptical because this was something new. It was definitely innovative. So it was, but then, you know, a little bit because it's controversial, you know, people want to come and see the freak show. And then people really got passionate because they understood that basically we were trying to make a difference. Because at the end of the day, making a difference is what motivates human beings uh, most than any other thing in the world, money included, as a matter of fact. So, um, people, the, and speaking of money, okay, not only I will show you now a little video from the Wall Street Journal, because we also ended up on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. And basically, when you're a child and you're thinking that one day, basically, first of all, you never think that one day you will be on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. But basically, the idea is that, you know, even if you do, it would never be for a rap battle. And people even started actually taking the rhymes and the lyrics and then singing them to each other. So let's, let's go with the video. Yeah. <laughs> 
When it comes to your freedom, they go the hardest. We just passed the vote to get rid of Roman charges. I heard the agenda that they really wanted to get a message across and they needed it put across in a platform that um, was a universal. Elections for the European Parliament are just around the corner. And to get out the vote, some politicians are losing their ties and sometimes their dignity. We use rap because when rap started, as a language or as a communication tool, it was about empowering people. And empowered voters are badly needed. In 2009, just 43% of potential voters across Europe actually cast their ballots. So at a recent event in Brussels, all four major parties turned to hip-hop, pairing MEPs with MCs to translate their ideas into rhymes. <laughs> Well, at least one new voter has been inspired. I've never voted in the European elections before, but I'll definitely vote now. I think it's important to get involved. Let me put it like this, play it down. So, let's keep going. So, there you go. This is the first ever um, European battle with the European Parliament, and we were very happy, if we go to the next slide, to report that in the end, go to the next slide, we actually we're able to make that difference that we were looking forward. Because if you go back and if you look at the statistics and you compare actually the same age range, okay, between the 2014 elections and the 29 elections, actually we recorded that basically, even though we have big problems with the youth in Europe, there is no doubt that right now Europe is no country, you know, for young men, as opposed to the movie, no country for old men, if you will. Basically, there was an increase in the electoral turnout for the young age. So I look forward to coming back to Naples to see here the first ever electoral you know, rap battle, because I'm sure that there is great material here too. Thank you.